Hi everyone, this is Mike from Tech Nerd Services. We're going to be installing Ubuntu Desktop 14.04.1 onto a computer. Some reasons why you might want to do this is that if you were, have a laptop or a computer that's getting old, so five to 10 years old, then uh, installing Ubuntu can breathe more life into it because it requires less re resources. And therefore, you can use that computer longer than you would if it just had Windows on. Another reason could be that you want to have a home media center or uh, host a web server or even host your own online storage so that you don't have to use third parties like Dropbox. That could be another reason why you may want to use Ubuntu as well. So have server like features. And the other reason why you may is because it's easier to find open source and free software on Ubuntu. So these are just some reasons why installing Ubuntu can be beneficial on a computer. So it could be either an old computer, it could be a new computer. You can install Ubuntu side by side that of Windows. So you don't have to get rid of Windows in order to install Ubuntu. Ubuntu is another operating system. So you've already heard of Windows. You've probably already heard of Mac OS X. So Ubuntu is just another one that is free and simple to install. And it runs on the same back end as things like Android. So with that, we're going to install Ubuntu. In order to get to this screen to first have the option to install Ubuntu, on another computer, you do need to first go to ubuntu.com and download the ISO file to burn to a CD. So to show, this is what the ubuntu.com website looks like. We're wanting to install the desktop version in which there'll be a big button to get Ubuntu now. And then I can choose 64-bit or 32-bit, depends on how old your machine is. And it even shows that if it's less than two gigabytes of RAM, probably can only use the 32-bit. And then from there, I just need to download the file. Then I can burn it to the disk pop it into the machine that I want to install Ubuntu in, and away I go. If I don't have an external CD drive, or it's a laptop that doesn't have a CD drive, then I can always have instructions to boot from a USB as well, and that's somewhere on this page too. Once you've booted up, you do have the option to first try Ubuntu. If you try Ubuntu, nothing gets installed on your computer. You can see what it looks like. You can click around and you can decide whether or not this is something you want to try or not. When you've decided to install it, there is the install button. I'm going to go ahead and click that. We're going to get this started. So it's first going to make sure that everything is up to snuff with the computer in order to install Ubuntu it actually only needs eight gigabytes of storage in order to run. Then there's the option to download updates while installing and to install third party software. Uh, third party software like Flash or MP3 playback are uh, not open source and therefore not installed by default, but it does give you the option quite simply to install them. From there, it's going to ask, how do I want to install it on this computer? If I already had Windows installed, it would give me an option as well to install it side by side that of Windows. So whenever I boot up the computer, I can choose to boot up in Ubuntu or in Windows, and therefore don't have to delete Windows in order to install Ubuntu. Uh, on my screen, it just says to erase the current Ubuntu version on it, because yes, this computer does have Ubuntu. I'd reinstall. I'm going to leave it at that option. Then there's additional options to encrypt the new Ubuntu installation. For security reasons, if you want to do that, that's possible, as well as this LVM, which to be honest, you probably don't need 
Unless you are installing right beside Windows, then it may be a little easier to manage the two operating systems. And then there's something else is advanced features. We're just going to leave it at Erase Ubuntu 14.04 that's already installed, and we're going to reinstall a new version of it. From there, it's going to guess what location I'm in. It was guessed correctly with Edmonton, but if it did guess incorrectly, I could always click to the next time zone, and I'll try to find a city that is close by. So there's Vancouver, and I can click back to get to Edmonton. We're now at the keyboard layout. This is where Ubuntu is going to guess what your keyboard layout is. Chances are the default is going to be correct because it is set to a QWERTY keyboard. But maybe you're from Canada and there's English and French keyboards, then you can always use the detect keyboard layout to have Ubuntu automatically check to see if your keyboard is the correct one it's chosen. Once it's done doing that, you can test to see if the keyboard is correct by just typing some things in the field above. And if everything comes out correct, then you're good to go. We're going to go ahead and hit continue. And the last thing will be to give the computer a name, uh, yourself a name and then a password. I'm going to go ahead and have it set to login automatically as well. Then I'm going to get the nice screen as Ubuntu is explaining just some things about it. So I can uh, wait for it to cycle through and give me different screens or I can click the arrows and see what is available for Ubuntu. All this is available in the desktop version because it assumes that the user will have a monitor connected all the time and they want to click through and use the different programs on the computer itself. If you do choose to install the server edition, I do recommend that that's only for advanced users because there isn't an interface. Everything is a uh, black screen with terminal where it's just a blinking indicator and you're typing in commands. So I really suggest that that is for uh, advanced users. Furthermore, anything that you can install in the server edition, you can install in the desktop edition. Uh, the main difference is whether or not there is that user interface that is taking up resources on your computer or not. So I'm going to go ahead, pause the video and get to the very end. And then once the installation is done, we'll continue from there so we can see Ubuntu. So now we've got to the screen where the installation is complete. All we have to do is click the restart and then we'll be able to see what Ubuntu will look like once it's rebooted. And there we have it. So the Ubuntu desktop is ready to go. And thank you for watching. Like the video if you liked it, dislike it if you dislike it, and put a comment down below. Uh, click the subscribe button if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video.